Yes, young lady, I'm here to help. <laughs> the explosion already happened, but I'm here to help anyway. Oh, the elevator. As soon as I climb the stairs. <laughs> Time to take to the, the stairs. Back stairs. <laughs> Why are they specifically bad stairs? Because everything Batman... Uh, <laughs> Batman, <laughs> you were just on the <laughs> ground just, floor! Yeah, you know, he just couldn't take the stairs down. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's a bomb. Okay, hold on. What's the password this time? Uh, uh the urine? Up and Adam. No. <laughs> so, what happens if you run out of time? Does it just game over? Not standard. Not standard. Just game, game over. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, these bombs have three-factor authentication. <laughs> All right, like hold how... on. What's your Google account password? I like how, like, Batman is twiddling his right-hand thumb, but there obviously isn't a round spinning control underneath it. I I I'm more thinking about three-factor authentication. Like, what would be the third factor besides your phone? Um, Snail your phone's mail. phone? The snail mail. <laughs> so hey, you, you get a letter. You get a letter in the mail. You fill out the form. You send it back. I gotta upload. It, 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 oh God! Freaking Neopets forums, man. But it would. I cleared my cookies, so I gotta put the password in. Oh fuck! Okay, the brain scratch count needs to be verified. I got the two factor. <laughs> well, I guess brain fetch is not going up until next week. It would probably be until. It would probably be um one of those um little keychain things that they give you if you don't have a phone for your two factor. Have any? Did any of you guys actually get your parents to mail in the Neopets permission slip in order to I get onto the Neopets in, forum? I was never in the Neopets. Oh, you missed out. It was a wild time. All right. That was like my first real online social experience, and it's, it's, it's wild. What was it? It's basically like... Uh, it's a slightly more involved Tamagotchi. Yeah, basically. Like, you get to choose which, uh, what kind of pet you want. And there's like this whole bunch... It's like a big like internet like kind of you get like this map of the world of neopets and you click on different parts and there's like different towns where like you play mini games yeah they have like little flash games that would like not be uh like newgrounds games basically and you win gold that you can use to buy like different toys for it and uh food to feed it and stuff like that you could like make your own little web shops to like trade items and things like that it's you know it was harmless fun Pretty much, and I got pretty into it when I was around that age and a little bit older than maybe I should have been playing <laughs> Neopets after. It but... came out when I was like just getting to that age where I was a little too old for it. Yeah, I kinda, I, you, you guys say that, but you're still avid Pokemon fans. <laughs> okay, I, I mean, yeah, that's true. But... To, to be fair, John, this is also the time when like Ruby and Sapphire was coming out, and I wasn't interested in those. Yeah, like Neil. I'm just saying, is like I, I, I'm surprised you guys would even bring up like the potential embarrassment factor. But it's like you guys still play Pokemon. It's like I don't, I don't think anybody would give a shit. It's, well, it's more okay it, to to be fair, John. It's more okay now at our age than it was at like 14, and you're in like end of middle school. Yeah. I suppose. I don't, but then I'll also, you know, keep my hobbies to myself. Well, Neopets <laughs> is a more like Pokemon's intended to be social, but you can mostly play it by yourself. Neopets is a social game. You're supposed to like talk to other people who play and stuff like right. that. And that's why they had for the forums uh, you had to mail in a this, uh, this a was a uh, letter of permission from your parents this was in like, order to get on. This was like really early days of the internet when everyone was worried about like how it would affect the children's and everything. Yeah, this was like 2000 and 2000 to like 2005. I mean, nowadays so. someone raises a stink about uh, the internet or phones like hindering oh, yeah, but, social but back development. Back, back, <laughs> back, back in 2000, don't talk to strangers, go in, don't get into their cars, don't talk to strangers on the internet. Uh, inter uh, 2019 going into 2020, summon strangers from the internet and get in their car. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, nowadays you, you talk about that kind of thing and oftentimes the result is that you just seem like an overly paranoid silly person and people will regard you as such at that time around the time neopets first came out the internet at large was a new thing and we were still like trying to yeah. figure out where our bearings were yeah so. i think what we we eventually learned is is that random random like crazy people 
trying to kidnap you off the internet is much less common than like someone you actually know doing something bad to you. South Park, South Park did a great episode on that. Well, yeah, uh, because David. like you, 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 you damn Mongolians. Oh, okay. It's like w building our shitty wall. When you when you talk to someone on the internet who's a stranger, the odds of them even being in close enough proximity to you to do anything physically to you is astronomically low. Um, but for some reason, when the internet was new, people had it in their heads that this was a much more likely circumstance than it realistically was. Um, yeah, yeah Be people thinking that folks you're talking through on message boards and other shit were, like, in the same neighborhood as you. And it's like, that's not how it works at all. Yeah. Well, also, a lot fewer people had the internet at the time, so it was much more likely someone could potentially find out who you were, I guess. Hmm. I also just think it's because we we as children had parents who had no idea how the hell any of it worked, and yeah, we no, had to yeah. we had to rely on them to tell us like how to get started. When in reality, they didn't know anything about it either. <laughs> yeah, you know, it really sucks that you guys aren't real people because I met you on the internet. You know, <laughs> it's true. Because internet people aren't real people, didn't you know that? Yeah. When are you guys gonna stop sending like holograms during Momocon? Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. Really uh, when are you going to stop sending holograms to too many games? All right. I'm sorry I couldn't send my homunculus this year, but no. <laughs> it's okay. You know, it, they break down every once in a while. It's fine. <laughs> Not your fault. Yeah, the batteries were leaking. It was it was very messy. How many different synonyms for explosive can you use as your password? <laughs> uh, let's get a thesaurus. <laughs> that is probably what they did when they were coming up with uh, passwords for these things. Um, In one of these Arkham games, I want one of the passwords to actually just be password at one point. That would be a good one. Like, you're breaking in... It has to be if you're breaking into... Uh, what Batman villain would have their password be password? The Kite Man. Kite Man. <laughs> yeah, you have to be breaking into someone in the middle of the game who's just dumb enough that they actually would have that. Okay. It'd be, it'd be either Kite Man or Clue Master. All right. Because nobody fucking asked for it. Detonation. Discharge. <laughs> eruption. Blowing up. Ignition. Bang. Blast. Boom. Rumble. Crash. Crack. Report. Report. <laughs> Man! Thunder. Thunder. Dun, dun, dun. Roll. Clap. Pop. Wham. Wump. Fulmination. <laughs> dun, 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 I don't understand dun, report. Uh, report! <laughs> uh, when it's spelled and pronounced a certain way, report refers to, like, the sound of something metal hitting another piece of metal or something. But it's just spelled as report. With an E? Yeah, All right, e. Batman, time to do uh, your book report that, on, this, uh, on this explosion. That I don't get. <laughs> Is that the bomb? No. Uh, generator. Oh, so he hugged the generator to get to work with his shock gloves. Okay. Yeah, you gotta yes. show a love. Okay. <laughs> Just a little love. You know All what right. I you know what I love? This trope of destroying computer panels and generators and for some reason the mechanism knowing to open on in that circumstance. Yeah, if when I eventually build my villain secret lair if anybody ever, like, destroys any of the computers, it's going to send a signal to all the nearby doors to set them to maximum security and never open. Just to <laughs> trap the, the hero inside when they eventually uh, try to, you know, stop my devious plans. I mean, I'll get stopped anyway, because I would be a terrible supervillain. I do not have the attention span for that. <laughs> Uh, so now in this section, since the goal is to get rid of the bomb, do you have to kill all the dudes, or...? We'll have to knock them out, yeah. Yeah. Uh, will the bomb just not allow you to do anything to it? It's well, like Batman won't do anything. Area. Yeah. Because if, if you start trying to do anything to the bomb, the guys will notice. More often than not in these scenarios, like they want you to secure the area first before you do the, the plot-relevant task. Yeah. Well, you know, sometimes it makes sense for a game designer to require you to actually engage with the game before completing a goal. Yeah, I guess it's just... Sometimes yes. the game does have fun with that, though, because, again, one of my favorite sequences of uh, the original Arkham Asylum uh, is when you use the long-range cryptographic sequencer to disable, I think it's like, Joker canisters 
and there's there's mooks surrounding them. But at that point, you have that upgrade, so you can totally uh, hack it. the canisters from uh, from above, and Joker will comment it on it. <laughs> like it's like he's making you look like idiots. <laughs> Well, you know, sometimes it's cool to give players a way around uh, a certain task. It makes you feel clever when you find it. Yeah. At the same time, if the sum total of your game's speedrunning tactics is run past everything, um, something... I mean, like most Metroidvania. Something has gone yeah. horribly wrong in the game design. <laughs> no, no, I no, went I the think, wrong No, way. run past everything sounds more Resident Evil. <laughs> yeah, it's basically Resident Evil 4. It's just run past yeah. all the Ganados. <laughs> run past everything. <laughs> I mean, it's like... It's, 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 Batman? <laughs> it's, it's, it's cool and strategic to run past, say, the zombies in classic Resident Evil because the act of bypassing the zombies is itself a difficult and challenging thing to accomplish. In something like Resident Evil 4, though, it's literally just... you're running in a straight line from A to B. Well, I mean, in the, res <laughs> in the new Resident Evil 2 speedrun, they glitch through the floor and then just walk past out of the, out of the police station entirely. But within the, within the game's, like, functionality. Yeah, you know, yeah. Without, so, like, like, I, deliberately I don't it. count glitch speedruns because that's, like, yeah. clearly not intended design. But the difference between running past everything in classic Resident Evil compared to RE4 is that in RE4's case, it could be, be potentially detrimental because enemies can drop shit. That's money you're missing out of. That's ammo you're missing out of. And you can't always rely on shit you find in barrels. Yeah. You know? But, like, they kind of had to give you rewards for taking down the enemies in Resident Evil 4 because otherwise you'd have no reason to engage with them. Um, yeah. Yeah. Whereas, in classic Resident Evil, because the because of the way the game was designed, you couldn't not engage with the enemy in some way. Just the um, just the task of getting past them was itself a challenge, and killing the enemy. Your reward for that was this enemy is permanently gone. This hallway is now safer, you know. So if you have to go down that hallway again, and you probably will. You have an easier time. Did somebody just say to beat him stupid? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Wait, isn't this the first boss from TMNT4? <laughs> no, that's, Bax that's, that's Baxter Stockman. <laughs> Baxter Firefly. You know... <laughs> what? Why is Firefly going after Batman now? Eh, he's just kind of nuts. Um, this is the game freezing rain. The game chops, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's in the transition between real time and in-game cutscenes as well. It's really yeah. obvious. More so in this game than in any other Arkham game. Yeah. yeah. Again, this oh, game is great cinematography, no, but it's do. also like oh, not okay. well optimized. And it, it, if you couldn't tell, like in earlier cutscenes in the PS3 version specifically, I'm not sure if this holds true in the any other version. But the screen tearing is pretty obnoxious at points. You know, it's great bosses that don't have any place in the combat system we designed for this game. Oh, you mean like a guy who floats way above Batman and you can't punch him? Yeah, the Arkham series has had a boss fight problem since game one, and I don't think it ever quite solved that problem. Well, Batman's not really a boss fight character, you know? Well, like... he, he could be if he was designed in a certain way. Unfortunately, the Arkham games did not design him in that certain way. <laughs> they designed him in a completely different way that is only really conducive to mook battles. Which I guess is why mook battles were the boss fights for <laughs> a while. I mean, Batman Arkham Asylum also came out at a time when we were still experimenting with cinematic gameplay situations. So stuff like the Killer Croc boss fight, for example, was at the time novel and interesting. Even though now, going back to that, it's kind of bland. Um... 
but we were still at that at that phase where the gameplay style that was popularized by Uncharted wasn't quite in vogue yet. Like, Uncharted was doing it, but it was still at a point where only Uncharted was doing it. So Does Uncharted really have boss battles? Because I don't... Yeah. No. I don't really know that series at all. No, it so. kind of just has, like, climactic gunfights. It, ha it, it, ha it has scripted sequences where they say it's a boss fight. Yeah. Mind you, that's more or less the entire game, but whatever. Yeah, like, same gameplay style, different franchise. The final boss of um, Tomb Raider Reboot is this, like, climactic fight up to where the final villain is, and then a highly cinematic moment where Lara gets a hold of a second pistol and momentarily dual wields like her classic incarnation would. Um, but it's, a like, a very scripted moment. So I I think it it really depends on what kind of game you're trying to sell because something in in the in vain of like uh, again, I'm also speaking as someone who doesn't really play Uncharted the, having the the the, the very gamey concept of a boss fight can very much take you out of the experience if it just like goes against everything else the game is trying to sell mm, you you know what I I I'll, I'll say that maybe for Tomb Raider because Tomb Raider has a narrative dissonance problem like nobody's business but Uncharted would work fine with bosses. It really would. It's got that kind of... What, what, what's a boss in Uncharted, though? Like, what would be a boss in Uncharted? Well, you, you're you running on the train and you have to get to the guy making away with your loot or something and you get there and then you just shoot well, him or something. Well, my, my point is that Uncharted has a very lighthearted feel. So a gamey concept popping up in Uncharted wouldn't be so out there. Uncharted already has way too much combat to be taken seriously. <laughs> like, everyone in the universe is trying to murder the fuck out of you. But and Nathan Drake just kills like hundreds of guys over the course of the game. And yeah. Just doesn't okay, okay. Shit. But still, like in in a general sense, a very general sense I should stress, a boss in a video game is something that's large and in charge compared to what everything else you've fought so far. Oh, you're saying so, that, like it, it doesn't make, Like visually. Like, I'm talking like very like, vi like just visually. Conceptually, what would a boss fight be in Uncharted? Well, there are enemies that constitute bosses and in fact Uncharted 2 has a really good final boss. In terms of this just this villain that has a unique combat setup, you know, and who is narratively established very well. It's just that, you know, they don't have too many unique enemy types that can be employed. But they could come up with them if they tried. Given the situations, well, they could just be enemies in in interesting vehicles. But Well, uh, John, I think you don't... <clears throat> the idea of what is a boss fight in Uncharted, I don't think is as different of a question as to, like, what's a boss fight in Streets of Rage. Because ultimately, in Streets of Rage... Most of the boss fights are bigger dudes that take more <laughs> hits before they go down. Right, or right, right. there are two dudes, or this girl has a whip, or you know, uh, we have sumo wrestlers that run through the screen, or you know, it's or whatever, it, it, you know? it's more <laughs> that in terms of the design process for Uncharted, they were more interested in in cinematic gameplay moments. So a lot of their big, really technically impressive gameplay climaxes are stuff like you running through a structure as it's collapsing or fucking chasing the badly written villain through the city streets because they wrote a chase sequence before they had the story and character ironed out and god damn it Uncharted 3 is a mess um, <laughs> but I, I, I'm serious in Uncharted 3's case they just came up with a bunch of gameplay cinematic situations and then they wrote around those situations instead of yeah, just like a real action movie. <laughs> yep. Instead of doing what they did in Uncharted 2, which was writing the game and allowing those situations to arise during the concept uh, development process organically, which is why Uncharted 2 is a much more natural feeling and well-paced game than 3. That's not to say 3 isn't a good game. It's just very strange. <laughs> um, like, the, the bad guy, Talbot is written so inconsistently because of this, because he has to fit into all these disparate situations that they wrote before they had the character figured out. Um, 
so at one point he's like an unflinching badass and then the other in the other scene he's running away inexplicably and these are the same character or at least we're supposed to take them as the same character even though they don't make sense as the same character you need a new hobby wow blistering burn there batman <laughs> <laughs> burn. 